Around midday, the wind picks up every day, all year round. Mui Ne in the province of Binh Tuan is a veritable hotspot for kite and wind surfers. Tourism is the daily bread for people like Canadian Matthew Quantis, who set up a surfing school here. For wind sports, it's probably one of the best in uh, Southeast Asia in terms of the length of the season and the amount of wind and the type of beach and the conditions. It's quite famous in Asia. Uh, it's, it's quite good, yeah. Now, the wind that keeps sport enthusiasts happy is also being harvested for energy purposes. Not far from Mui Ne in Tui Phong, Vietnam's first ever wind power station has been connected to the grid. There are 12 wind turbines powered by energy supplier Vietnam Renewable Energy. Until now, there was little interest in investing in wind power. Purchasing prices were too low and the legal situation unclear. But the government wants investors and is now working with Germany's Agency for Technical Cooperation, GTZ, on a law to end that. Angelika Vasilka is advisor to the various ministries. The greatest hurdle is the subsidization of conventional energies, which makes wind power comparatively more expensive. We need to advise the government about the advantages of wind power over conventional energy. It's environmentally friendly and doesn't produce carbon dioxide emissions. Each of the wind turbines is 117 meters high and has an annual capacity of 1.5 megawatts. Until now, Vietnam has relied heavily on fossil fuels for its power. But it has to import much of its coal, gas and oil from China. So switching to wind energy would make the country more independent. The first wind farm, therefore, has political implications. Wind is a completely clean source of energy and protects our climate. We are the first in the country to use it like this. And although there are no legal regulations, the regional government of Bintuan has supported us in the construction of the first wind farms in Vietnam. The wind farm was built by a company called Forlender, which also took on the job of training operating personnel. Vietnam doesn't yet offer suitable training courses, but the wind farm needs skilled employees. It's important to offer training opportunities. Naturally, we can't start off with schools for thousands of people, but we can teach those people who will be working with the technology to know what they're talking about. Ho Chi Minh City is the largest in Vietnam. GTZ has organized a training session here. The students are learning how to choose the right location for a wind farm. The most important thing is to take accurate wind measurements. Without them, it's impossible to know how strong the wind will be. Little mistakes in wind measurements can affect the feasibility of a project. That was a problem in Germany for a long time. The wind measurements were bad, they were too optimistic. And after two or three years, we saw that there were years when wind resources simply weren't good. Developers and investors have to be patient because it takes years of measuring wind levels to get a realistic picture. The training session is also the first time people from Vietnam's fledgling industry have come together. Some, somewhere here they do the wind, somewhere here they do the wind, but we don't know each other. But now they create a community, they, they create a network so that everybody can know that, okay, that guy do this, we can come to talk to find any chance to work. Yeah, that's good. 
The network is growing, but most investors are holding back, waiting for a legally binding feed-in tariff and a purchase commitment on the part of energy suppliers. Only then will they be able to make reliable calculations. Um, doesn't there are many national developers who have already registered plans for 2,000 megawatt projects. That means they've already viewed locations and are taking measurements and conducting feasibility studies. So when a law which supports wind energy finally comes into force, development here will be fast. Vietnam's energy needs are growing by about 15% every year, and supplies often run low. Air pollution in places like Ho Chi Minh City is increasing dramatically. This is contributing to climate change. To counter this, a national master plan proposes that almost 5% of electricity be wind generated by 2020. The wind farm in Binh Tuan is already being expanded. Within a few years, it will be home to 60 wind turbines. And many other farms like it will spring up along Vietnam's coastline. 2,000 kilometers have been deemed suitable for the purpose. Surfers in Mui Ne often spend hours on end in the water because wind conditions are constant. Wind power has already made this place famous.